Apple just released a new MacBook Pro and we put it to the test with both Final Cut Pro 10.3 and Premiere Pro CC 2017. Chris here from Video Maker and in this video we're going to answer is it worth its large price tag? Every year or so, Apple releases a new product and the world drools. A coveted brand with a coveted price and a history of prestige. Apple has a tradition of repeatedly releasing category changing new features with new ideas. Apple has a lot to live up to. How they will fare when you compare any new product to their past successes? Enter in MacBook Pro and the touch bar. Apple set us up with a very beefy machine to review. The stats are just about topped out. Weighing just four pounds and at a tiny 15.5 millimeters, it's light and thin. Our first thought was that weight and size should equal shorter battery life, but Apple promises up to 10 hours of use per charge. With the Radeon Pro discrete GPU and four gigabytes of embedded DRAM teamed up with a bright 500 nit monitor, it produces 25% more colors than standard RGB with P3 color. This MacBook Pro can also support up to two 5K displays. The trackpad is now much larger than it was with its predecessor, but one of the biggest changes is the four Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports that can charge and power from any port. Last but not least is Apple's newest feature, the touch bar. The touch bar replaces the function keys on the top of the keyboard, which it controls changes based on what you're doing and what application you're in. It can do simple things like change the volume and brightness, add an emoji to a message, or give you predictive text to select from. You can log in and buy things using Touch ID from Touch Bar, but it's more than those novelties. Depending on the app that you're in, it can be customized to your needs a bit more function than just being virtual buttons. In Final Cut Pro 10.3, it can be a touch representation of the timeline, allowing you to navigate through your project. There's only one question with the touch bar. Why do you need it? If Apple had added a touch screen, which is common in today's laptops, it could do all of those functions of the touch bar and more. We would love to see the power of this computer with the interactivity of an iPad while retaining the keyboard and trackpad. With that said though, the touch bar is helpful and it's fun. Normally, when we do a heads up comparison, we are putting two different products up against each other. In this case, however, we happen to have a 2015 MacBook Pro in house, which just like the new 2016 model we have is fully spec'd out. We thought it would be interesting how the new and the last MacBook Pro would perform against each other. Keep in mind, these are high end results. How it's configured may change your results dramatically. There are a lot of different functions we could be testing on each of these computers, but we thought we would see how they perform for editing. We tested two different editing programs for this evaluation. The first is the newest version of Final Cut Pro 10, 10.3, and the other is Adobe Premiere CC 2017. Here is what we found. With both computers running simultaneously, we saw a 23% faster encode time on the 2016. That's not overly significant on a small scale, but if you look at an encode that would normally take you eight hours, it now takes just over six. That might not be a huge thing because Final Cut Pro will allow you to continue to work as it renders, but imagine what you could accomplish with those extra two hours. When we loaded a similar project into Premiere Pro CC 2017, exported using Media Encoder, we saw a 32% faster encode time over the 2015 MacBook Pro. That was mirrored by the direct render out of Premiere Pro CC. On a side note, when using Premiere Pro, we were disappointed that we were not able to use the touch bar. We anticipate Adobe will include touch bar features in a future update if they are able. With the changes to this release of the MacBook Pro, none is more noticeable than the four Thunderbolt 3 ports, two on each side. This feature means that the computer can be charged from either side. The ports can also be used for DisplayPort, Thunderbolt, and USB 3.1 Gen 2. This is the biggest part of the computer that constantly challenged us. When we needed to move a large amount of data to the new MacBook Pro from our main editing system, we were using a two terabyte Samsung T3 SSD with a USB 3.1 Gen 1 connection. Up until now, we have used a cable with a USB 3.0 conversion to connect to our other systems. This is super handy and it worked fine. However, every time when you went back and forth to the MacBook Pro, 
to move more data, we needed to swap out cables to a USB type C on both sides. If this was part of our normal workflow, a lot of time would be wasted looking for the cable and replacing it. And on top of that, outside of the T3, we don't have any other USB 3.1 products. Apple was a bit more forward thinking with this computer than we were ready for. So unless you're already using a USB type C product, you might need a dock solution. So one of those dock solutions is the OWC Thunderbolt 3 dock for 280 bucks. It has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, has one mini display port, four USB 3.1 Gen 1 standard A ports, one gigabit ethernet port, one SPDIF digital audio port output only, one SD 3.0 media card reader, one hybrid 3.5 millimeter headphone mic jack, and one Firewire 800 port. It's not yet available and we have not evaluated it. Keep in mind that if you need one of these, you will need to add almost $300 to your budget. There's been a bit of an outcry about MacBook Pro's price. The cheapest configuration you can buy that includes the touch bar is 13 inch model for 1800 bucks. This computer that we reviewed, $3,500 and can be upgraded all the way up to 4,300 bucks. There's always been a premium when buying Apple, but with this release, it's top cost of $4,300 versus $3,450 for the last MacBook Pro release. Apple is gold plating that premium. So the big question is, is Apple overvaluating its new computer $850 more than its processor? For our use, let's take the data we have accumulated for the purpose of working with video. The increase in price is almost 25% more. If you are a Final Cut Pro 10 user, you get 23% faster render speeds, so you pay for what you get. A Premiere Pro CC user, there's even more value with a 32% increase in performance. But that's just judging the processing power during export or render. Regardless, we've come to expect performance increases each year without the price going up. The touch bar is pretty sleek, it's more useful than it seems, but doesn't work with non-Apple applications. This MacBook Pro is expensive, but it's also beautiful and fast. You'll pay a premium for this computer. It worked great with Final Cut Pro 10 and Premiere Pro CC. And the touch bar is a welcome addition. We are still puzzled of why they didn't jump to a touchscreen and forego this step, but alas, that's just dreaming. Even if you're used to buying Apple products, this price tag might surprise you. And if you're used to PC prices, your jaw might drop. It has good improvements, and for at least six months, you'll be the envy of your friends with the prettiest computer in Starbucks. So there you go. That's our review of the new MacBook Pro from Apple. If you'd like to buy one and help support us make videos like these, there's a link in the description. You go ahead and click and buy it today. As well, we have links for both Adobe Premiere Pro CC and Final Cut Pro 10. As always, like, share, and comment. We want to know what you think. I've been Chris from Video Maker, and until next time, keep doing the hard work that you do. Bye-bye.